Hey everyone, it's Exile from Casually Competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And today, as you can tell from the title of the video, I'll be showing off my Darkest Diabolos deck profile. Now, Darkest Diabolos didn't really do as much as they would, uh, was hoped to have done. Kinda was outshone by, uh, Sky Strikers to be perfectly honest, and plus it didn't live up to the hype. But it's still a fun, uh, casual deck, and with the right cards you can make it rather decently above casual nearing competitive but I, I wouldn't really like suggest that but uh let's stop with that get straight into the profile so first three copies of darkest d bows lord of the lair your boss monster the practical main card of the deck uh you should almost always run three if you can't really find the space to do it run two but like I said, he's the boss monster. If you tribute your own monster and he's, and if it's dark, then you can summon it from your hand or from the grave. And it can sometimes force your opponent to practically give them a minus one, either putting a card from the top of the deck or the bottom. All in all, it's a rather good card. Uh, level eight and dark, so like I said before, a large, it can be used as an allure target or it can be as used for trading. Plus it's dragon, so goes well with dragon support. Next, we have three copies of Lilith Lady of Lament. One of the best cards in the deck. Lilith's effect is cost, so you can always trip your opponent's monster. Works extremely well with the field spell Lair of Darkness. Plus you can search for any trap, such as evenly matched or back to the front, a mirror force or a virus card. Works really well. The only uh, sad thing is that it loses half its original attack if it's normal summon, but you can special summon in, in multiple different ways. Here is the next card, Arima, the Wicked Warden. Pretty good card. Uh, it acts as terraforming to search Lair of Darkness if you needed that for that. Also, uh, Arima also works as uh, tributing any monster. It can tribute itself so you can draw a card, or you can tribute another monster, another dark monster, and search a dark monster from your from your deck with 2,000 or more defense. So you can search for Darkest Diabolos. Next we have, a, I guess you can say something in the package, we have uh, Skarm, as well as Tour Guide. So Tour Guide works two ways. One, you can summon Tour Guide and get Skarm. Or two, you can get Lilith. And like I said before, Lilith's effect is cost. So if you can, you can tribute itself or you can tribute Tour Guide. And if you have Darkest Diabolos Darkest Diabolos in hand or grave, you can summon it right right uh right after. But Tour Guide also sets sets up a couple of rank three plays if you want to play rank three. I personally don't run an extra deck in this deck just because of the fact that I don't need to. I just run things over with Diabolos. But if I had to pl uh, play an extra deck. Uh, Grand Pulse is good. Uh, Levier is good because you use the Lure of Darkness. Uh, you could also use, uh, Fan Knight Brick Sword and even Dante if you so wish. Next card is Jurigato. Jurigato is, well, it's dark. And two, uh, you can special summon it during the damage step, gain a thousand. And then, uh, you can tribute it and target a face up card. And he gains a thousand. Works well with the Abelos. And Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight is just used to deck thin. It's dark, so it's an alert, it's an alert target. And, uh, sets up your Diablos in the grave so you don't have to deal with it later. Next, we have three copies of Lair of Darkness, the field spell. Kind of, uh, an important card. Lets you tribute your opponent's monsters and gives you and your opponent to tokens based on the turn it's played. Uh, there's not really a reason why you should be playing less than three. Unless you're playing Dragon's Ravine. Uh, three terraforming, so you effectively have, uh, nine different ways to get into Lair of Darkness. Pretty self-explanatory. Three, Allure of Darkness. This card can be swapped out, because there, there could be better options. But Allure of Darkness is still a decent draw card. But this deck isn't really used to draw cards, it's more used to give your opponent, uh, minuses. Speaking of uh, drawing cards, or rather deck thinning, here is Foolish Burial and Two Dragon Shrine. 
mostly used just to get rid of Darkest Diabolus from deck, so you can deck thing, and then make it easy to summon. Here should be three copies of Melody of Awakening Dragon. Uh, I don't have the other two because uh, I can't find them, but you know, Melody of Awakening Dragon lets you discard a card and add two Darkest Diabolus. Still pretty decent. Two Call by the Grave. Uh, you know, Hand Trap this Disruption. I would be playing three, but I can't find my third copy, so if you can, run three. Why not, you know? And Monster Reborn, because, you know, Monster Reborn. Okay, for the traps, two Grinning Grave Virus, because Grinning Grave Virus is actually very powerful. You don't know what your opponent is playing. Don't worry. If you have Lair of Darkness, just play Grinning Grave Virus, and they're forced to send cards from their deck. They're forced to destroy cards from hand or deck. Uh, the only deck I wouldn't suggest playing this card against would be ABC, because it can just send pieces from the decks of the grave. Yeah, that kind of uh, boosts their plan. Full Force Virus, mostly used uh, to get destroy monsters with 1500 loss of defense, which is a majority of uh, the game right now. And Eradicare Epidemic Virus limits to one for a reason. Uh, tribute to Dark Monster with 2500 or more attack, declare spell spell or trap. Look at your opponent's hand and then destroy whatever you card, whatever uh, type you selected. Two back to the front, uh, practically a searchable called the Haunted, or rather a Races of Dragon Souls. Not really a reason why you shouldn't be playing it. Uh, it helps bring back Lilith or, or Darkest Diabolos, anything really. Really good card. And finally, we're playing two Mind Crush. Mind Crush uh, works very well with the virus cards. It used to be back in the day where you, you would play Mind Crush with Crush Card Virus back in Teledad format. You would use Crush Card, sneak into your opponent's hand, and if whatever wasn't, uh, whatever you weren't able to get rid of using Crush Card, you would use Mind Crush afterwards. So yeah, that was the deck. Uh, if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section below. If you have any uh, suggestions for improvement, also tell me in the comment section below. If you like the video, leave a like, and if you like our, uh, this content or whatever, just you know subscribe and we'll keep on posting new videos over the summer and hopefully into the future. See you guys later.